Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hello, my name is Olivia Brown and I am currently a fourth year undergraduate student at UCLA studying anthropology. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a beginner's guide to biological anthropology. Now, this video in particular is very close to my heart because I am a biological anthropology student. I talk about all the different kinds of anthropology on this channel, but every time I get the opportunity to create a video about the topic or field that I am especially interested in, I get really excited. So first things first, what is biological anthropology? So biological anthropology is looking at the evolutionary history of humankind. And this has a lot to do with understanding how evolution impacts impacts our biology and how evolution impacts our behavior. And there's also a lot of overlap between understanding primates and understanding humans within this field that is biological anthropology. So now that you guys have that basic definition down, let's switch gears into those resources a little bit. So I have divided it up into three categories. I have books, websites, and videos, because some of these things are definitely more accessible to y'all than others. So the first one that we're gonna be doing is books. I just ran up here because I realized I forgot to actually bring the books up. So excuse my being out of breath and that was likely an awkward cut to this clip. But the first book that I'm going to be talking about is Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Now this may surprise some people in my selection for biological anthropology, but the first about quarter of this book is explicitly biological anthropology. Now Sapiens is exactly what it tells you it's going to be, a brief history of humankind. And the first few hundred thousand years of our species and how Homo sapiens came to be today is very briefly explained in this book. And I think it's good because it doesn't expect you to have any prior knowledge on like evolution or the history of Homo sapien or anything like that. So it's a really great place to start. Although I will say once you get into the rest of the book, it's less biological anthropology and more just like history and anthropology, but still a great recommendation and a great read for all y'all anthropology students out there. I actually did do a book review video on this like a really long time ago that I'll link right here. It's kind of embarrassing, but if you want to go check that out, you can. Now, the next book that I'm going to be talking about with you guys today is Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. And once again, this whole book is not biological anthropology. It's just about the first half that I want you guys to be focusing on. Now, Guns, Germs, and Steel basically looks at this idea of geographic determinism and how some societies around the world were quicker to industrialization and agriculture and all that good stuff. That's not the part of this book that I want you guys to focus on. A lot of biological anthropology has to do with understanding how our ancestors evolved and biological anthropologists actually refer to this environment where our ancestors evolved as the EEA or the Environment of Evolutionary Adaptedness. And so a lot of biological anthropology theories go back to this initial place where Homo sapiens evolved. And they say, well, there's actually all these problems because our environment now is really different from what our environment used to be, right? And so this book, again, it, does, it doesn't talk about evolution. That's not the point, but there's a huge chunk in here on agriculture. And I think understanding the agricultural revolution, while it's not like explicitly about biological anthropology, it still gives you a lot of the tools that I think are necessary to understanding biological anthropology theories that become relevant later. And as you get like deeper into the wormhole. <laughs> now these two books, again, not explicitly about biological anthropology. They do have elements of biological anthropology in them, but if you want a deeper dive, something a little bit more specific, I'm going to recommend to you guys The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. Now I admit I have not actually read this one yet, but I have learned about it as much as I possibly could before this video and have been recommended it by many different people. And so basically Richard Dawkins is an evolutionary biologist, which is, again, that's like basically what biological anthropology is. It's evolutionary biology. And he turns the narrative around in terms of how we have previously understood evolution. And what I mean by this is evolution for many years has been understood as this thing that happens from the organismal standpoint, right? Like how do me, how do I as an organism 
make decisions that impact my fitness, right? Or how does my physiology impact my fitness? But what he does is he turns this idea on its head and says, no, 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 let's not look at it from the perspective of the organism. Let's look at evolution from the perspective of the genes and how the genes want to get passed on into this next generation. And it answers a lot of questions that previous evolutionary theory hasn't quite been able to answer. Now, if you put all three of these books together, I do think you will be in a good starting point for understanding biological anthropology. But as not everyone is a reader, we're going to switch gears into videos. Now, once again, I was horribly surprised by how few videos are on the internet about biological anthropology. It's just like random people talking about it, which I guess includes myself. So. Now the first video that I'm going to recommend to you guys, it's on YouTube, it's called Human Evolution and it's made by Crash Course. It was for their Big History series, which is actually a class that I took in high school. So if any of you guys have taken Big History before, Hello, so did I. But basically this looks at the old world and new world primates and how primates actually evolved into our modern selves. <laughs> you look at Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, probably Australopithecus, which now I can't remember, and actually understanding the relationship of our human ancestors. Now the next video, I hate to do this to you guys, I almost never put resources that I created in these videos, but it was just so striking how few resources on biological anthropology there were on the internet. Now I actually created a video called what is biological anthropology and it has all the basic information in it that I think you would need. So if you really just want like a spark notes version of the field, go watch it. It's really not that long. Now the final video that I think you guys should watch is of course also on YouTube and it is called natural selection made by crash course. And if you haven't picked it up already, biological anthropology is literally just like evolutionary processes in the context of human beings. And so understanding natural selection and the different types of selection that happen is actually really, really helpful in getting a good grasp on biological anthropology. So yes, yeah, so those are the three videos that I think you guys should go check. Out. Now, the final thing that I'm going to share with you guys is websites. So it's quick, it's easy to read. It's not a long book, but it's also not a video that you have to sit through. And the first one is actually an article called What is Biological Anthropology from Science Direct. Now, Science Direct is a website that posts a lot of different publications in, I think, like every area of academia, psychology, anthropology. Basically, I find publications for things all the time on that website. So this article on what is biological anthropology was pretty brief. It's pretty reliable. So I thought I would just link it in the description box down below. Now, the final website that I'm going to recommend to you guys is from the American Anthropological Association, not to be confused with AAA, the car insurance company. And this is just a basic resource that I include in all of my beginner's guide videos that I think anthropology students and just anthropologists in general should be aware of. They have links to explain biological anthropology they have links to career opportunities links to current career listings that I think could be helpful for anyone who has some fears or concerns about entering this field so I really do think it is a great place to start now I have a feeling this video was a bit longer than normal so I'm gonna try to keep this little conclusion short but I hope you guys are able to find at least one of these recommendations that you guys like whether that is these beasts of books that honestly, I, I cannot believe I read them for fun. <laughs> Whether it's these or those videos, please do go check those out. I also have so many other videos on my channel about anthropology in general. So maybe if you're like, hmm, I'm not sure if biological anthropology is the one for me. Don't worry because there's a bunch more videos on my channel about the other areas. So yes, go check those out. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic spring and a fantastic Sunday. And I will see everybody next week. All right, you guys. Bye.